In this week's episode, we're going to be discussing the benefits of a control burn, but should you be control burning? Mossy Oak Properties, where outdoorsmen find their favorite place. In the wildlife management world, there's a lot of fads mm. come and go, like, geez. Hinge cutting. Hinge cutting. Switchgrass was a big fad for a while. Like yeah. we got to plant it at 10 to 20 pounds per acre. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh, and I was guilty of it, yeah. you know? There's so many fads, but there's one fad that we're kind of happy that people started discovering it. Mm -hmm. And it's not a fad. Yeah. People just actually started discovering how beneficial this wildlife management tool is. Yeah, controlled burning. And I would put it more or less as a fad, because when I think of fad, I think of something that kind of burns out or doesn't necessarily have credibility. It's just something yeah. kind of a flash in the pan. Controlled burning, let's label that as a positive trend. Yes. in the right direction because there's so much that can be accomplished with a controlled burn during the dormant season this time of year and obviously during the summer with the growing season burn. But this time of year is when you see most people doing controlled burns because they can be more easily accomplished this time of mm -hmm. year because plants are dormant, you have more drier fuel and it's easier to conduct a controlled burn this time of year. Yeah, before you go into any controlled burn, whether you should burn or not, going to burn, yeah. make sure that it's legal in your state. And the rules and regulations, if you are allowed, make sure you go through everything with a fine tooth comb. And the easiest way to accomplish that is to call your division of forestry, your fire department, etc. But after that, yeah, there's just, there's so many types of uh, burns. And Cody mentioned dormant season burns, there's in, you know, uh, growing season mm. burns. That's for another day. Yeah. But the big thing is, is the types of burns like the habitat types is what I'm trying to spit out. Right. There's warm season grasses, there's old field, and then there's your woodland type of burns. Right, and in this video, as we mentioned, it's burning is a, a positive trend, but like everything wildlife and habitat management, we want you to be intentional. Mm -hmm. Don't just burn for the sake of burning because it looks cool or you saw a YouTube video about it. And in this video, yeah. we're gonna go over those three habitat types that Eric mentioned warm season grass is old field and a woodland environment and determine do you even need to burn yes because some years you don't need to burn and yeah. as tempting as it may be to, to, and it's always fun we always like to burn but that, that habitat might not need it so we're going to go over those habitat types and determine if they need to be burnt as cody and i were talking i think people are really discovering you know the benefits of control burning and um and it's it's great but uh here pretty soon you'll start seeing a lot of people uh, post on social media or you'll you'll see a lot of it or talk to people about you know burning warm season grass fields and more specifically maybe a switch grass field so here's the topic of discussion should we burn it or should we not burn it now burning warm season grasses but more again more specifically switch grass if you have a solid stand of switch grass and you're doing a dormant season uh, burn on it and the, and the field's basically okay no invasives, no briars. All you're doing is basically making that field what? Thicker. So it really becomes a biological de desert. So something to think about every, just put it on a burn rotation, but not every year, because you're just making it thicker and thicker and actually it might lodge and um, start choking itself out. So, but what I'm standing, going back to where we're standing today, again, we, we went in there and brush hogged it. And this is what, burning is for. We come in here and we'll burn a section of switchgrass that was just junk. You could hardly even see switchgrass. We'll do a controlled burn on this and then follow it up with a herbicide application of uh, just a broadleaf like a 2,4-D or what have you and you will not recognize where I'm standing. It will be switchgrass that's eye level above my head. It takes that little to accomplish just a controlled burn. But burning to use it to get things back the way it should be, that's a consideration. But just to burn to burn, especially switchgrass, you might be actually causing a little bit more work for you in the long run. Yeah, that's all really well said. And as we've always said in our habitat series of videos is to be intentional and to identify your goals before you do any management decision. And like Eric said, when it comes to switchgrass, burning during the dormant season encourages 
more grass. Yes. So and especially yeah. for switchgrass, like in this situation, this is a screening strip where we kind of want it to be as tall and yes. as thick as possible. So yeah, burn this and that's the response we're going to get here. But if we have a bigger stand where we want it to be kind of a mix of switchgrass, bunch grasses mixed with some broadleaf plants where deer can also where deer can bed but also have a food value then that might be a situation where we don't burn it as often so we can have more broadleaf herbaceous plants yeah. in the switch because it can be aggressive because it responds so well to fire that it could take over the stand as eric mentioned so all that to say like we've always said before you do any management work on your property identify your goals be intentional so you're not just doing work for the sake of doing work all right, next habitat type we're gonna discuss is a woodland environment. And as you can see, we are standing in one and you see a lot on social media, a lot of people burning woodland environments. It looks really cool, it's really smoky. And the result when done well can be an incredibly beneficial patch of habitat, especially if it's an oak savanna type of situation where you have hard or soft mass trees spaced out and in between native grasses, native shrubs, broadleaf herbaceous plants. But just like with switchgrass, before you burn a woodland environment, be intentional and don't just burn for the sake of burning. In this situation right here, it looks really cool. We got a big open space behind us, a lot of leaf litter. But this is not an area that we would burn because if we look up, all these trees in here are alive and growing. There's not a single hole in the canopy. So if we were to have a successful burn this winter, which no doubt we would, we would burn the leaf litter. Come spring, these trees would leaf out, the canopy closes, and we just burn for the sake of burning. And as we've learned, there's so much life underneath our feet in the leaf litter from caterpillars, insects, nematodes, like there is an entire ecosystem underneath our feet in all this leaf litter. So burning just for the sake of burning it is actually doing more harm than good. Now, if we were to come in here and do some cutting, have a logging crew thin this stand, or if we were to remove the undesirables with hack and squirt or girdle and spray, any type of management to open a hole in the canopy and let some sunlight hit the forest floor, then we'd have A, more fuel to get a more effective burn in here but we'd have a more effective response as a result of the burn because there's holes in the canopy there's sunlight hitting the forest floor and then we'd get the native plant response that we'd be looking for spot on <laughs> <laughs> spot on right no one thing i mean just to piggyback on top of that but there isn't really no need that was really spot on is if you are going to do a control burn in your woodland environment you know, there are preparations to take before you do that. And one of the major things that happens a lot is that, you know, going around your more dominant or your more, the species of trees that you want to protect, like your oaks and hickory cherry, your marketable timber slash wildlife trees. Right. But what happens is you get all this brush. Yeah. Against a tree and people don't take the time to get that brush off those trees. Right. And what happens is it gets so hot, it can damage the trees. I've done woodland burns where we did it and there was a lot of dead oh, oh, because right. we just assumed somebody prepped and took care of that. And it wasn't necessarily just doing a controlled burn, but it was not prepping the site. So it's one of those things where, yeah, let's burn it, but did you do the right application to get it ready for the burn? So. Good stuff, Mr. Altizer. That's right. Like all things management, we've stressed it over the last year. If you followed these videos and we've stressed it up until this point in this video, it's just being intentional, not doing things just for the sake of doing them and being deliberate with your decisions. When it comes to control burning, one of my favorite burns, other than a, a good old during the day switchgrass burn, um, is burning an old field environment based on the benefits that that happens but again do you need to burn it now if an old field has diversity has you know your goldenrod ragweed beggars lice and the list goes on you know and it's it's got a little bit of woodland uh, woody uh, component to it your ruba species a little bit of maple poplar your softwoods you know those pioneer trees that kind of grow up you want to diversify so burning it every year is one of those things where it's it's i'm, I'm not a big fan of that just burn it on a rotation once every five to eight years and depending on the growth of all those uh things just you want to control that diversity and keep that diversity active and and living but 
if you're not having that, you have just a, a non-diverse old field, like a lot of goldenrod. Um, you're starting to see invasives like Tioga deer tongue, um, Lespedeza, which we just kind of discovered here just a little bit ago. And, up, and the list goes on of invasives that are controlling or starting to take place in your old field. That's where a good burn will t you know, be very beneficial. And the reason why is because that way when it come green up, you can address that. If it's not diverse enough, running a disc through it throughout, you know, when it's clean, though, that way the gains can get in there and make those broad leaves upset so they can have the explosion of diversity or doing it throughout the year on top of that. But yeah, just having an idea, the theme of this is having an idea of why you want to burn. If it's fine, if it's not broken, burning on a rotation every five to eight years. But if it's not, burning it is where it's very beneficial. So you can start controlling those invasives or diversifying that site. So control burning, an old field, it's great. And um, yeah, I mean, it can really set back. You got tr stuff like autumn olive, you know, depending on how hot that is. You know, the, that fire, that heat can get into that bark system and kill the tree, not just the top, but the underneath, and having a lot of fuel. So sometimes burning a little bit, a couple of years in a row, that way you can get some fuel, some, that way the fire is effective on burning, uh, you know, controlling those invasives is something to think about. But, but just to burn it, to burn it, no. And I want to, one more thing that we never really think about, there's a lot of you know, to burn it every year in an old field, it's not really a wise decision also because of other living organisms that utilize this old field. It's more than just a game species. A lot of bugs, a lot of insects depend on, you know, goldenrod stalks and, and pollinator stems and all this stuff to overwinter. I know it's something that you, I, I heard myself just say all that. I understand that. It's a little weird off, off the wall, but many species depend on this environment. Old field to me is very special. It's one of those gems where we're really starting to see it disappear off the landscape and it offers so much. But yeah, it's not difficult to manage, but you just have to, little, have, to have a little thought process that goes into it. Well, in today's episode, we covered not a lot of stuff, but we just wanted to give you a brief uh, idea of all, you know, each habitat type that gets talked about when it comes to control burning, whether it's warm season grasses or switchgrass, more specifically, uh, old field environments in your woodland environments. While burning is very beneficial, we highly encourage you to burn where legal, right. safely and wisely, because there's a lot of resources out there that help you achieve your goals when it comes to that. But you might be taking time away and actually do more harm than good when it comes to managing your piece of property. That's right. Yeah, the theme of this video was to, we kind of highlighted, as Eric mentioned, those three different habitat types and went over, do they need to be burned? In some situations, yes, like that switchgrass. In mm -hmm. other situations, no, like that woodland environment. We just want to really stress when it comes to controlled burning to be, I don't know, we should have a little counter throughout this video how many times I've said the word intentional. <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> to be really intentional when it comes to controlled burning, because as Eric just said, in a lot of situations you don't need to and that time that could would be invested in a controlled burn yeah. which a controlled burn is a time investment from fire breaks to lining up help to actually doing the controlled yeah. burn to clean up it's a time investment and in some situations that time could be better spent on other projects yeah. or time spent with your family so again with this video we wanted to go over those habitat types that most people are dropping flame to this time of year and in a lot of situations when applicable those a, a fire is incredibly beneficial to warm season grasses old field and woodlands but they don't always need it and what we just wanted to highlight in this video is situations where it may need it or where it may not yeah control burning you know it's been happening for, since forever <laughs> yeah, i mean right. you're before you know european step foot on this property you know right. i mean it's just uh it's been happening yeah but it's become recent, it's become new to a lot of us. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, again, you don't want to do it incorrectly and not safely. And that way it kind of, this comes off really stupid, but it, 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 if you do that, it, it hurts us all. Oh, for sure. So you gotta have a plan, don't just burn. I kind of made a joke about, 
in the beginning it being a fad. It is not a fad. This is something that we should embrace. We should use on a yearly basis if need be. But again, just do it smartly. Have a plan like we always preach. Right. Go out there and evaluate because you might, again, like what Cody just said uh, correctly, there's other things that we could be doing. That's right. Masio Properties. We're outdoorsmen. Find their favorite place.